Okay, so now I want to go over the linear pattern tool and circular pattern tool. Um, so I'm going to go down and create a new part studio. I'm still in the same workspace, uh, class 6, which we named up here. And I'm going to create a new part studio. I'll call this one pattern example. And now I'm just going to create a kind of a base on the top face or top plane. So select a sketch, click on the top plane, center point rectangle, uh, make sure I'm coincident on the origin, draw that out, use my dimension tool, let's say it's five inches across and let's say four inches high and then I'll extrude that, uh, I'll leave it at an inch. Okay, so now the pattern tool works kind of like the mirror tool that I talked about in a different video in that we create the feature first and then we pattern off of that feature. For example, uh, I'm going to create a sketch and we'll just put a hole through this part and then we will um, pattern that hole. So I selected a sketch and I selected the top face as my sketch plane. Um, the top face of this block that is, not to be confused with the top plane, so you can see the difference there. Um, and now I'm just going to go and I'll say it's a center, uh, yeah, above the origin. Um, and what this did actually is it made it coincident with the midpoint of this top line. Uh, that's okay, that's also the midpoint, or that's in line with the origin as well. So we'll do that. We'll say it's a diameter of maybe a quarter of an inch, it's 0.25. And then I'm going to dimension it from this top edge to the center of the circle. So I clicked on the top edge. Now I could also now click on the edge of this circle, um, and that would work but it's not very good practice. Um, in the industry, the, it's more common and it's best practice to dimension to the center of a circle. So I'm gonna do that and I will say that is 0.5 inches away from the top. Okay, now everything is defined and I'm going to click on extrude. And now again, we can see we have new, add, remove, whatever. It automatically will come up as add or new um, but I want to remove it, I want to cut a hole through this, and a depth of one inch would get us all the way through since we made this block at one inch high, but just for practice I want to go here and say through all. So that's going to make sure I go through every solid object that is behind this um, sketch that I made. Okay, so I click the check mark there and we see we have a hole through there now. Now I can go up to the linear pattern tool um, and I'm going to click the drop down right next to it and I can see there's also circular pattern and curve pattern. Right now I want to select linear pattern and again kind of the same window that we saw uh, with the mirror tool in that we have to change this drop down menu right away. It defaults to a part pattern but I don't want to pattern this entire part. I just want to take the feature that we created and pattern that. So I just want to take that hole. So I have to go and click the drop down and select feature pattern. Okay, um, I get a lot of questions on this sometimes. Um, so that part's really important if you're not getting a mirror or a pattern tool to work very well. This is the first thing I would check. Go here, make sure you have the feature pattern selected. So now it asks me what features I want to pattern. I can either select the uh, this hole, or I can just go over my feature tree and select that extrude too. It'll do the same thing. Now it's asking me what direction. Okay, so I have to tell it which way I want to make um, my copies go. Right, so I'm going to select just this top one, this top edge, and it's going to follow a straight line along that top edge and make a copy of it over here. Okay, so there's, there's the copy of my feature, or the pattern of my feature, and 
we can change the distance. Maybe we want to put it at half an inch. Um, and now a quick note on that is the half inch is from the center of our first circle to the center of this pattern. Okay, it's not a half inch from edge to edge. So we can set the distance, we can change that to whatever we want. Um, and then we can change the instance count. Okay, so I can go, you know, three, four, whatever. I'll just say four for now. Um, that can change how many instances we, how many copies we make. Again, here's the change direction tool. So we can flip if we want to go out one side or the other. And then I have some options. I can do either second direction or centered. These are the two I'm just gonna focus on right now. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about apply per instance. Um, so the second direction, pretty obvious, right? Uh, I can choose a second direction and I want it now to come, um, we'll say come down. Uh, I'll make some more circles underneath this. So I, I selected this left edge of the part and now the reason I don't see anything is because the instance count is at one. Let's change that to two. And I now see the copies right here. I'm going to change this distance again to we'll just go half an inch. Um, and there we go. Uh, so now we have a couple, two rows of four holes um, each. And I can hit check on that. And that's kind of the linear pattern. Um, I should go back in here. So I'm going to go back and right click and edit. And I want to show you the centered uh, feature. So if I want to go kind of like the symmetric extrude, um, we can select centered. And now it's going to go both ways. Um, so the counting on this, I think, is kind of weird because I have the instance count set at, set at four. So it's going to count the original as one, and then go two, three, four out both sides. So the original is one, two, three, four out the left, and then one, two, three, four out to the right. Um, so I want to do, say if I type in five, uh, that's going to give me, I think, nine total holes. Yep, that'll be nine total. So uh, there's kind of the linear pattern tool. Uh, I can hit check and that locks in our changes. And now real quick, I'm going to go over the circular pattern tool. And to create a, a circular pattern, we first need some sort of circle to pattern it around. So I'm going to click the sketch button, click the top face of our part again, and then I want to, I want to create a construction circle actually. So I don't want to revolve or cut, extrude or anything with this circle. I want it to be a construction circle. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to click the center point circle as well as the construction line tool. And then I'm going to left click just somewhere down in this lower left corner. And we can see that this line is dashed, showing that it's a construction line. So I'll dimension this. I'll say it's a 1.5 inch diameter. And uh, from the edge, we'll just say it's one inch from this edge and one inch from this edge. Oops. There we go. I missed those. OK, we don't want that to be at a weird angle. So we put that at one inch. Now we have a fully defined circle. And now, uh, basically, I'm just going to draw another circle somewhere on this. And I don't want this to be construction now. So the construction line is no longer selected. I'm going to put a smaller circle. I made sure it was coincident. Let me do that again so you can see. Select the center point circle. Hover over this, uh, make sure it's highlighted and, it's, and you are locking uh, that small circle coincident to our construction circle. Okay, so again, I'm going to dimension this at a quarter inch diameter. 
and let's use uh, let's constrain this now actually so I'm gonna deselect my dimension tool and I'm gonna want I'm gonna say that this I want to be vertical with this point here or so I want to move this circle up to the top so I can do that using the vertical constraint I can click on the vertical constraint and then click on the center of my circle there and the center of my construction circle and it'll swing it around so it's vertical all right that's good now I'm going to uh, extrude um, yeah why don't we just why don't we extrude the part up we could cut through again um, but I guess this just shows you that it doesn't really matter if it's a cut or a extruded feature uh, I will shorten this so it's easier to see we'll say that's like 0.25 Now I have a little post right there. Um, and now what I'm going to do is go to the circle pattern. And it asks the entities to pattern. Again, this is um, default to a part pattern. I don't want that. I want to go in here and I want to go feature pattern. So features to pattern. I'm just going to click this time right on that post. Now it asks for my axis of pattern. And I went, oh, well that circle, that construction circle I had would have been really nice over here, um, but I don't see it anymore. What I can do is over in the left hand side on the feature tree, if I hover over sketch three, um, you can see the highlight of what my sketch three was. Uh, this button here is it's to show or hide a sketch or any other feature, so I, I clicked that and now I can uh, I unhid this sketch so I can see it now. So I could hide that sketch again um, like that and it's gone and unhide it so I can now use this as an axis of pattern. So it's going to select the pattern axis and I'm just going to click on this circle. Okay, so it automatically sets up 360 degrees and it's going to say instance count of four. So we have four total. Um, I can change this again to whatever I want. Um, I kind of like the revolve tool. You know, maybe I only want to go 180 degrees. That's going to put four of them uh, with the first and last 180 degrees apart. I can switch the direction of rotation, right? Clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, I can do equal spacing. I don't know why you, I guess, not want equal spacing. Um, usually everything is equally spaced. You can also do the centered position again. Um, but now this is telling you that we have an error because it's trying to go one, two, three, four, one side, and then one, two, three, four around another side. And this bottom uh, feature is like, running into each other. Um, so we can either change the instance count, or actually, I'm sorry, we would have to change the angle in this case. So we can just say like to 90. It'll go 90 out, 90 degrees both sides. Um, yeah, so I think that is covers just how to use the linear pattern tools.